welcome to day 15 of the 25 apps in 25 days series. The daily series where I show off a brand new app every single day for 25 days in a row. If you missed any of the previous episodes, I've linked a playlist down below, so feel free to check that out. But for today's episode, we're taking a look at yet another offline music player app, but this one is super retro because it's designed to fully replicate the classic iPod experience. And it does a damn good job at it too. As always, just a reminder that this video and this series does not have any sponsors, but it is supported by those of you who download and use any of my apps, as well as those who purchase any of the digital products that I sell on my website, all of which will be linked below. And I do want to quickly highlight the companion app to this series, my app shelf, which is a library of handpicked app recommendations from me. We literally add brand new apps every single day, so it's definitely worth a look. But with that being said, let's check out day 15's application. Okay, so the app that replicates that beautifully retro iPod classic experience is called ClassyPod. And believe it or not, this app is actually completely free and open source. Now, unlike most of our previous open source apps, this one is actually available to download via the Google Play Store, or you can also get it on GitHub or F-Droid as well. But once installed and open, we first need to give the app permission to access our music and audio files. So we'll tap allow. Then the app will give us the option of following a bit of a tutorial, but I'm just gonna hit skip and just show you myself. The app will then also prompt us to disable battery optimization. So I'm gonna tap okay, then allow. And with that done, as you can see, it is literally the exact same setup as that classic iPod experience. So you scroll the wheel to move up or down like this, then you hit the middle button to select and you hit the menu button to go back. By default, this top section is also touchscreen, which gives you some nice flexibility depending on how you wanna use the thing. But while we're in this settings section, we get a bunch of customization options that let us tweak the look and functionality of the app. So if we tap on device color, we can change the color of the virtual device that we're using. And I will say, at least in its current implementation, there is a little too much blotchy grain visible on each of the colored variants. So I prefer either the silver or black options. I'm gonna go with black for now. Then I'll tap menu to go back. Then if we come down one to this click wheel size option, we can switch that click wheel between three different sizes depending on what we're after. And I'm actually gonna set this to large. You can also change the sensitivity of the click wheel too if you like. And you can also disable the touch screen option here if you really wanna have an authentic experience, but I'm gonna leave that set to on. Then below that, we can disable the haptics if we like, but if you're using this app on a slightly more premium phone with good quality haptics, then they're definitely worth leaving on because they just add to that authentic experience. But you can also turn on the click wheel sounds here, though keep in mind to actually hear them, you might actually need to enable your tap and click sounds within the settings app. We also have the option to switch our volume mode, which by default is set to app, which means the app will have its own volume parameters and won't be allowed to go above what you set the system volume to. But if you change this to system, then it'll actually control your system volume, which is probably the better way to go for most people, if I'm being honest. Then we've got the option of disabling the split screen mode. And I actually prefer this option disabled because then it feels really retro and legit. And then the only other customization tweak here is this option to enable immersive mode. And this will full screen the app, which again, I think makes the experience even better. But that's it, we can now navigate back and I'm just gonna tap on music, then cover flow. And again, this feature is also implemented really effectively, I think. But then let's tap here, then tap again to start playing the song and it'll start another tutorial, but I'll tap skip for now. And there is our music playing interface. So from here, we can obviously play and pause. We can also go back to the start of the song or if we were in an album or playlist, we could skip forwards and back between tracks. You can also long press to seek forward or back if you like, and then swiping around the click wheel will turn the volume up and down like so. Oh, and if you tap the middle button here, it'll take you through these classic options too, including this option to give your media star ratings just like you could on iPods back in the day. Then if you long press that button, you get a few extra options like adding it to an on the go playlist. You can also browse either the original album or artist, and you can even edit the song's metadata if you like, which is really handy. Then let's cancel that and long press the middle button again, and let's select to add it to this on the go playlist. Cause once you've done that, if we come back all the way back here, which does take a few taps, but if we then open that playlist menu and open up the on the go playlist, we now have the option of saving any tracks that we might've added to this on the go playlist to a new playlist by tapping on save playlist. Jeepers, that was a lot of playlists. Anyhow, we can then open that new playlist and rename it if we like, and you can go real old school by using the click wheel to manually input your letters one by one, or if you just tap the text field here, it'll also bring up your phone's keyboard, which is way, way faster. 
We can then hit OK and there we go. We now have our saved playlist. And if we want to create a completely brand new one after that, just reopen the on the go playlist and tap on clear playlist. And now you can add different songs to that blank on the go playlist again, and then repeat the process of saving that to a new playlist with a new name and so on and so forth. And for those wondering, yes, of course, the app does support background playback, so you don't need to keep it open to keep your media playing. And the developer has mentioned that they're also working on built-in games, media viewing, as well as lyric support. So hopefully we see all of those features added in the not too distant future. But that's it, that's the Classy Pod app, and I'm sure that you'll agree that it is an absolute cracker. As always, don't forget to check out my app shelf for even more great app recommendations. And don't forget to hit subscribe so that you don't miss out on the next episode. But aside from that, that's it. Thank you all very much for watching and I will catch you later.